everyone welcome back to my channel I'm just heading out from Seathwaite it's a uh, it's a beautiful autumn morning and um, unfortunately I'm not doing a camp I would have loved to a camp last night but uh, if you follow my channel you know I've got a problem with my hand and um, I can't really use it certainly can't use it for putting tents up and all that uh, business so I'm restricted at the minute just to uh, just to walk in um, so I thought what um, what walk can I do my first walk back again after my, my operation I thought what can I do I've got to do something that uh, I know quite well something that's exciting though I don't like boring routes so we're heading to Scarfell Pike up there through Ruddy Gill and come back by the corridor route I think I'll just make it up as I go along I'm pretty familiar with the area um, so yeah it's a beautiful morning I've not actually seen anyone yet it's just gone nine o'clock um, so let's get on with it so I'm just approaching Stockley Bridge now just there and I've caught up with a few people heading up the, the path there that path takes you to Stihead Tarn so a quieter route is the path up Ruddy Gill I've actually used this ascent route on uh, when I did my uh, summit camp on Scarfell Pike I'll put, a, I'll put a link to that in the video um, so you might, you've probably seen it before if you've watched that video but uh, it's always good to get out on a day like this temperature is uh, 5 degrees when I set off but uh, when I looked at the forecast we were talking about I think 25 mile an hour winds on the summit of Scarfell Pike and the wind chill is minus 10 so I've got uh, I've got all the gear I'm, uh, I'm prepared for it I usually reckon it's about three hours up three hours down this walk so um, set off about nine o'clock and sunsets at half four I've got my head torch but I don't want to be coming back in the dark but I've, I've brought it just in case yeah so head up Ruddy Gill now So I just got to the top of the Ruddy Gill path now and it's taken me just less than an hour. Great views there back to Derwent Water, Skidor Range, Blencathra as well but um, the view this way is not so bad either. The Great Great End, absolutely love Great End but uh, this route I mean there's Ruby Gill. Quite spectacular. But there is, this route is the most direct route up from, uh, from Seathwaite. Most people will go the, the Stihead Tarn way. It's longer and it's an easier ascent. This is pretty much straight up and then you're on to uh, Esk Horse there. So uh, probably why it's, I haven't seen anyone on this path at all, but all to myself. Um, probably why, because it's quite... <laughs> quite a slog. Uh, oh, just got a sight of uh, Great Gable there. There's Great Gable. Yeah, what a stunning day. Everything will be revealed soon when we get a bit higher up. Day like this, just absolutely stunning. Yep, Esk Horse next. course now and uh, my ears were getting freezing the temperature definitely dropped it's um, 1.7 degrees beautiful day though so I can't complain but uh, I've just put another layer on and got the old beanie on keep my ears warm two and a half thousand feet here 
Oh God, but um, great views right out to the course there. And then looking back to um, the Skidore range, the water again, where we came from. So now it's uh, heading up towards Hill Crag. And uh, from there, Broad Crag and onto Scarfell Pike. It took me an hour and 15 minutes to get here. Good views back there as well. There's um, Esk Pike and uh, back to the Langdales. But uh, the way I'm going, I've just noticed some uh, group of people going up there. And what I tend to do, just uh, just to add a bit of interest to the walk when I'm when I'm walking, it's just a bit, just what I do. When I see people like that, I think right, I'll try and get past them people. Just just adds a bit of uh, bit of fun. So uh, let's get past them then. So I got past that lot behind. It took me about 15 minutes. Just uh, heading up now to. Hill Crag. Get that behind. <laughs> wow, what a day, what views. Now, this bit up here is very rocky, so I need to be really careful. I can't afford to slip and I have to use this, this hand. So, I've got to put the camera away for now. I'll be back to you in a bit. to Scarf Alpine Summit. It took me two hours and five minutes from Seathwaite. There we are, there's the summit there. And uh, it's pretty glorious. Fantastic views across to uh, Simmons Knot and Scar Fell, down to Wasswater as well. Oh wow, you can see the Isle of Man. Not if you can, but easily see it, yeah. Then looking towards uh, Pillar, Scott Fell, Red Pike, Kirk Fell, Great Gable, yeah, absolutely amazing. What a day, what a day. I think I'm just gonna have a bit of shelter and uh, something to eat behind these rocks. Just over there. So a lot of people have been asking me about my uh, my hand operation and how it's gone. I just want to say a, a real massive thank you for all the amazing comments on uh, on my last video. It was. Uh, <laughs> I was quite overwhelmed by it actually. It's, there was about 170 comments and they were all just, you know, people taking the time to write such amazing comments. I really appreciate it. It's really, it's really helped me. Um, so yeah, so the, the operation itself was for a disease I've got and it's called Duplatrens Contracture. It's where the fascia in the palm of your hand grows around the tendons and causes them to contract and then it pulls your fingers in like that. So it's normally the little finger and the ring finger that's affected and that's that's what I had. So I put some pictures of uh, of my hand and the operation on, on the video. So if you're a bit squeamish, you might want to fast forward this bit and, uh, and skip that. But um, yeah, so the, the operation itself, because of COVID, I needed to isolate for three days before the actual operation. Um, so I had, I had the three days isolation and then for a week after the operation, I couldn't get out of the house. So I was, I was stuck in the house for nearly two weeks. I had a, a massive bandage on this hand, like a boxing glove, really. It was really difficult with the uh, the big bandage. I couldn't I couldn't do anything with that hand. I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't wash up. I couldn't eat with two a knife and fork. It was just I couldn't believe the, the, the stuff that I couldn't do. I couldn't get my clothes on over the bandage. It was just an absolute pain. But yeah, the operation itself, um, it was a three hour operation. It's quite intricate because of all the nerves that's in your hand and what they do, they, uh, they cut out all the excess fascia that's around the tendons and you've got to be really careful not to damage any nerves. I've still not got feeling in, in part of these fingers. But when I came round off the after the operation, um, 
I had quite a high temperature, so I had to stay in hospital overnight. Put me on a drip and just gave me some uh, antibiotics for that, and that was fine. I went, I went home the following day. But now, uh, now they've got the big bandage off. Uh, I had a little bandage on for another week, and uh, as soon as I got the big bandage off, I had to start doing exercises for the fingers. I still can't bend them or straighten them fully, but uh, the exercises will help that, and I've got to do them for th three to six months. After two weeks, I got the stitches out, and there was uh, there was over 30 stitches in my hand. Uh, so when I got them out, I got home and I, I was having a look at it and <laughs> I found that they'd left six stitches in. Um, so it was a weekend and I couldn't be bothered going back to the hospital, so I just took those six out myself. But uh, it's healing up quite good now, but it, it's still really painful. I can't, I can't do anything with it at all. I can, I can use those two fingers, but that's about it. I've got no, I can't close that hand and there's a lot of pain in the palm and still in the fingers but it's just it's a slow process i've just got to be patient with it and uh, i'm sure i'll get there in the end there's a very thin layer of frost on all these rocks and it makes it really bloody slippy you see it there on the rocks yeah got to be really careful here so i'm just making my way back now via the corridor route back down to Stihead tarn I've got my mitten on my faulty hand, but <laughs> great gable and great napes, what a stunning place that is. Can't believe I had to bail in one of my uh, recent camps up there because of that freak storm that came in, but um, I'd love to be up there tonight. I, could, I, I probably would have been out last night if it wasn't for my hand. Um, it was quite a good night last night and obviously today is beautiful as well, but uh, I'm just glad to get out. Um, makes a change not to have a, a camping uh, rucksack on my back. This feels like light as a feather. I can't even feel it if I'm honest. But uh, when you're used to a camping rucksack, it's a hell of a difference.
so that's it for today's video guys i'm sorry it was just a, a short and sweet one but um i wasn't even going to do a video if i'm honest um but i just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone for your support um i, I really appreciate it and uh my hand will be fine in the end i'm sure and um youtube's going well i'm really really enjoying all the support really enjoying getting out doing the, the videos so I'm, I'm loving that but um i've just got some other stuff going on in my life at the moment and uh i just really don't know what the future holds for me at all but uh anyway once again i really appreciate your support and i'll see what goes on with me and uh hopefully i'll be uh back out making more videos uh at some point thanks a lot guys See ya.